Hi everybody, my name is Janelle Cooper. I am here today to teach you how to make a cocoon sweater, which is all over the internet. People make them all the time, but I have never made one before. And I'm going to amp it up a little bit and I'm gonna do it using a panel of planned pooling. So this is the panel I've started. You don't have to do planned pooling on this. If you wanna make this cocoon sweater and you just wanna use a plant a, a panel of whatever you can so it's just a rectangle right so we're just going to use a rectangle to get started i put some bare minimum basic measurements on here that i got off of somebody else's pattern and you can actually change it to go with your body if you want to um, i have decided that i'm going to go a little bit bigger than the one that i saw just because i kind of want it to drape a little longer on me and then what we're going to do is once we make this rectangle we're going to fold it and we're going to sew it together to make the arms and then we're going to add onto it with a contrasting color we're going to add the bottom the sleeves and then up and around the neck so i am using fall the color fall in red heart super saver um just so that you know um for the, the last video i did a lot of research to find as many different color variations I could find in as many yarns as I could find. So I have sort of a master list that I'm building of all the different colors that you can work with that you can color pool with. So if color pooling is what you're trying to do on this sweater, um, check out that list. And I the list is available on the original video um, and it's also available on my Facebook page. Um, and eventually um, there will be a blog that has a list of all of those um, as well. If, there, if the blog is done, I will have it linked in the description. If not, I'll just have a link in the description that takes you to the Facebook um, group post so that you can see it there. In the last video, I only did one section of the Argyle. So I only did like this much of it. Um, and so and this ended up being five sections across. So I'm going to show you how to do that, how to plan out that spacing for it to get it started. The first three rows, once you get the first three rows done, it's a piece of cake. So I'll show you exactly how to keep really quickly, how to keep your argyle straight and perfect. And then I'm also going to show you how to change skeins because we're going to go through multiple skeins on this one. It'll probably be about three and a half. I picked yarn in a contrasting color to go with this. I didn't know how much it was gonna take. So the um, Karen one pound <laughs> was on sale and it's very similar in size to the Red Heart Super Saver that I used for this one. So I grabbed it, it was like, it was, I got it for like half price and we're probably, I mean, obviously you don't need one this big, but I didn't know how many skeins to get so I just went for it. So those of you who watch my videos probably know that I am not one for pre-planning everything ahead. I can tell you exactly what um, what items that you're gonna need for your supplies. I can sketch out, I usually sketch out what I wanna do and then I just go for it. Because I believe that making a piece, any piece in crochet is a journey and it's a fun journey and I just know that if I mess it up I can take it apart and I'll put it back together and luckily you will get the edited version of this so you don't get to see all the mess ups but just know that they were there so if you um, are like me and you like to just wing it this is the video for you if you are a person who needs everything like detailed out ahead of time <laughs> I might not be your girl. Um, I do the best I can, but um, I definitely do believe in just taking the journey. Right now it's 44 inches wide. You can measure elbow to elbow if you want, and that'll give you your kind of how long you want yours to be. Um, and then I, I have it set to go 24 inches up and down. Um, and right now it's about 14. So I have it's a little more than 14. So I have a little further to go. I have about I have about 10 inches to go, which is gonna be a skein and a half more. Um, so about four skeins total is what you'd wanna buy in whatever color changing yarn you want. You're also going to need a measuring tape for sure. We're gonna use that a lot. Um, a needle to weave your ends in. And then I'm just using the recommended hook size. And for the Red Heart, Super Saver, the recommended hook size is I, which is a 5.5. 5. 
millimeter. Um, and this one I believe is also size I, but even if it isn't, no, this is a size H, but even if it isn't, that's okay with me because it's little, if I go one size up, it just makes it a little bit more looser and flowy and not quite as tight. So I like that feel and look, especially for this particular sweater. So I'm gonna use a size I hook for mine. The beginning of this video is going to be about the basics of the plan pooling. So if you don't want to do plan pooling and you just want to do a rectangle of whatever you want on there, you can do that and skip to the next section. Then we will do the part where we measure the sides and pull them in together. Um, and we're just going to kind of fold them in and then sew them together. It's going to be way bigger than this. Um, and then we will start adding on the ribbing with the contrasting color on there. So that's pretty much the whole video. Um, so you can kind of skip to different areas if you want to, or you can watch the whole thing with me and just kind of spend your day watching me. This part does take a little while. So, um, you know, maybe find a Netflix series or something that you want to watch so that you can work on this while you're watching TV. All right, let's get started. Okay, welcome, welcome. This is Janelle Cooper, and we are gonna work on making this plan pooling style cocoon sweater. We're gonna do it with a panel, just a rectangular panel of plan pooling. However, if you do not wanna do plan pooling, you can do it with a rectangle of whatever you want. It can be striped, it can be granny, granny stitches, it can be fancy stitches, whatever you want, as long as it is a rectangle that is about this size. I have sections to work with that goes from here to here. So, and I ended up doing one, two, three, four, I did it right, four, five sections of it. Can you see that where like the, where the diamond kind of goes out to its farthest point, right? Um, that, or you can count like the pieces of the green or whatever, but anyway, so it's about five sections that I worked with. The difference between four panels and five panels is like that much space, right? If you are trying to decide whether to go smaller or bigger on this, I would say go bigger because I think that these actually look better when they're a little bit bigger and a little drapier than when they're tight. So this is my initial drawing, 44 wide, which is about elbow to elbow. So that's about good for me. And then 24 long. Um, but I have four skeins right now. If I find that 24 long is not going to make it drapey enough for me, I might go for five. So we'll see. Um, each, each skein I measured out um, when I'm doing 44 inches wide, which is five panels of the color change. Um, it is about seven inches. One skein is about seven inches tall. So um, right now I've got two finished and that is 14, about 14 inches tall. The plan is 24, but um, you know, three is gonna be 21. So we're going to do a fourth one, but I might complete it and go to 28 and see if that is the, the look that I want. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you, <laughs> this is gonna seem weird, <laughs> but I'm gonna show you how to do what I consider to be the easiest part first. That way um, it's not too overwhelming. Those first three rows can be a little bit um, of a challenge. So we're gonna start off, I'm gonna do this. So what you wanna do is you wanna match it up perfectly with the yarn that was before it. Okay, so basically that is where we ended was back here. So just match it up. And then instead of pulling through your final loop with the old piece, you're gonna pull it through with the new piece. Pretty easy. But you do kinda of wanna get it as close as, as you can because um, you can always make up for it. If you are a little off, you can always make up for it with your tension, just like we've been doing all along. Um, but match it up. Pull it through. This is the last two loops of the last single crochet at the end. I'm gonna show you how to do the moss stitch here in just a second. But that's how you change skeins on there. And you can go ahead and trim this so you don't have this like massive long piece. So this is, we're gonna go up. I'm just gonna leave these little pieces and I'm not gonna try and sew over the top of them or crochet over the top of them because moss stitch kind of goes up and then down and then up and then down. So I'll show you how to weave in those ends later. Just let them dangle right now. We'll come back to them. So we're gonna chain up two 
and we're gonna jump over this single crochet and we're gonna go into the space in between the two single crochets right there. So a uh, moss stitch is single crochet, chain, single crochet, chain, single crochet, chain. Super, super easy. When we do, um, when we do the next row, you're just gonna only do, you're gonna do the chain over the top of the single crochet and then a single crochet, not in the chain, but in the space around the chain, underneath the chain. So it goes so fast, it's very quick. So we'll just go through here. But we do wanna make sure that our color change is happening one stitch before the one before it. And see how that one right there is like half orange and half whatever that, um, I don't know, what would you call that? Kind of a goldenrod color. You kind of want to make sure that that is what's happening here. So because we sort of came into it with a color change, I am going to, or a, a skein change, I'm going to take out one of those um, chains on there just to make sure that we are at the right color area. It's going to be a little tighter on the side here, but as long as you know where that stitch is, it doesn't matter. So we're going to do a single crochet in here, and it should be sort of orange on one side and sort of that um, goldenrod color on the other side. That is the plan, okay? The next one should be solid goldenrod. And this is not, so, and if you watch my other video, you'll know this, but just to kind of refresh your memory. This is the row before, but we're pretending that's not there. We're only looking at the row that's directly below it, which is technically two rows before. So um, just kind of keep that in mind so you don't get confused. Um, this is last row, pretend it didn't happen. Now we're paying attention to the row two down. And the way you can tell is it is the one directly below the stitch that you're doing right there. So that, see how the color changed happened one stitch before. As long as you're always doing that, your color pooling will be perfection. Like just your, your argyles will never be squishy or elongated or anything, it'll just be perfect. So just keep doing that. And if that, if you have to, um, make sure you chain one in between. If you have to do a little bit of changing of your tension to make that happen, that's what you do. So like on this one, this one is like half buff and half green, right? And this one's full green. So, and no two pieces of yarn are gonna be, or no two skeins are gonna be exactly the same. They're all dyed a little bit differently, right? So just get it as close as you possibly can. So I'm gonna leave that because I only had one stitch to work with there, but I have one, two, three, four stitches before I change to this the rust color. That'll be right here, right? So I know that um, I'm gonna need to probably do it a little bit bigger to to travel across that yarn a little faster so that we can change there. If I don't, I may end up changing a little bit late. So um, to do something a little bit looser, you just kind of like, you just do your chain a little bit wider. You do this stitch, instead of doing it super tight, you kind of pull it up a little bit and then do it. And that kind of keeps that stitch loose. So it's already starting to change. I might have done it a little bit too loose. See how it changed like one early? So I'm gonna go back, and this is just, you know, establishing a new um, skein is, um, you know, it's gonna give you a couple little challenges at the beginning. So I'm gonna do it just a little bit tighter than I did before. Okay, so just starting to change, so perfect. So this one should be the full rust color right here. One stitch before and one up. There we go. So we have established, we're back on track at making sure that these stitches are lining up correctly. I really should have unwound that yarn. <laughs> so we changed over to this color. Um, I changed maybe a little bit too quickly there. So we're going to make it just a little tighter so it can not travel across the yarn quite so fast. And this is constant. When you're doing plan pooling, you are always like undoing and redoing. Just to, It's a game that you play with yourself to make sure that those match perfectly, right? The next one should be full green, which it will be, dark, neat, like that evergreen color. 
And then we have a little bit of time before we change to the next color. So I just try to keep it as, um, as much as close to what I was doing before all the way across. And if I have to adjust when I get there, I will. Because you just never know. So like this one right here, it was just, look, it's like green and just starting to change to the orange. Um, that looks like it's gonna line up right, so let's just see. Yeah, it's a little bit, like I changed it a little bit too fast, so let's just go a little bit tighter. There we go, that's a little better. So the light green and the dark green on one stitch. That's if you want it to be perfect. Obviously, if you don't care, then just go for it. Okay, so that is how to keep your stitches perfect. It's how to change a skein. Now I'm gonna show you how to start, how to do five sections in one piece like this. So we'll go to that one. Okay, so when you have a brand new piece or a brand new skein that you're working with, I always pull from the center. You can't tell from the last one I did, but I, that is pulling from the center. I just have to get through the mess that I created on the other one. And then I tie this up so they don't get um, tangled up with each other. So I pull from the center, and what you wanna do is you wanna find the color change pattern on this. And it, it has to be, in order to pull with it, it has to repeat, That all that's all it has to do. So. We are going to, here, I'm gonna stick this over here because it's off to that side. And I'm gonna show you really quickly how this repeats. So let's say we're starting with this amber color right here, right? And then it goes, it changes to that um, rust color or whatever, you, goldenrod, and then like a light green, and then orange or red-ish rust color, and then kind of a dark red and then dark green, okay? And then it should, oh, and then back to orange and then yellow, okay? So the actual color change and then it goes orange, yellow, green, just like we did before, right? So that's one section that then you're gonna do basically five of those and that's how you get five panels of the color change. This one has a weird thing in it, but um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that started so you can see it. Let me trim that thing off of there real quick. Okay, so when I started mine, this is not how I did mine. I, I tend to do mine like from the center of the color. When I turn around and come back, I don't do it from the end of the color. I usually do it from the center just because I like the way that that centers out the um, Argyle pattern better. So you have like, basically you're ending it. How do I do this? So one end will have this much of the color and the other end will have this much of the color. So you are you know it's kind of more centered on the pattern. That's why I do it that way. But just to make it easier for you to see it, I'm basically just gonna show you how to do this. So it doesn't really matter where you start when you start chaining. Um, because you're gonna you're gonna end up undoing part of the chain at the end anyway So and I kind of explained this in the last video and showed how to do it But you're not gonna go all the way to the end of the chain You're gonna go to where the color changes and for me it was halfway through the light green So that's so that gets left behind and then we just undo it back to where it started And that's how so you don't have to worry so much about the the number of chains or any of that stuff We're just gonna chain it until we get to where we want it to be so we're gonna do basically five groupings of this, these color changes. They're easier to see when you're chaining them than they are when you're just holding it out because it's not as long. Don't worry, I'm not gonna make you watch the whole thing. I'm gonna skip to where it is, but um, for now I'm just gonna chain. or do it in fast motion. <laughs> okay, so how you know that you are halfway through a color is you basically just chain it out, find out how many stitches it is, one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm going to go back five chains. I didn't count one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so that's five chains. So we're, we're halfway through that color. If you wanna do a halfway through the color thing, you could just go from green to yellow and then um, start going back. So technically, this is one full color change section of this particular yarn. Um, it's nice to just chain it out, it makes it easier to see. Then you do however many sections you need to make it as wide as you want. For me, it was five. 65 inches. So my original chain, that's not how long it is because you know the moss stitch takes up more space, but my original chain was about 65 inches. Um, so if that is what you're trying to figure out and you're using a different yarn than I am, then just kind of figure it out how long your your color changes and then divide, like, you know, let's say it's six inches or let's say it's 10 inches, right? Then you you gotta, you gotta wanna do as much as you can to get to about 65 inches in your um, chain. Um, and then of course you're gonna kind of fudge it and add on to it or take away from it depending on how wide you want it to be. But I think 44 is a pretty good number. So, okay. Now that you've established that, go ahead and do five across and then I'll show you how to come back. So five color changes all the way out. We're gonna, I'm gonna do some magic here so it doesn't take so long on camera. Hold on, let's get this set up. Okay, <laughs> one color change done. Now we're gonna do five. Ta-da, five. Okay, one, this is one section. One, two, three, four, five. And you can kind of adjust it to wherever you want it to be. For me, I'm gonna do halfway through the green. So we already figured it out, it's gonna be five stitches of green, right? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so then you're going to moss stitch across. So you're basically to do that, you're going to skip that chain, skip that chain, and you're going to single crochet into this one. Now, setting up the first three rows is the hardest part, and there's a lot of adjusting. You're not gonna do any adjusting for the first row most of your adjusting is going to happen in the third row. So just go ahead and do your first two rows as best you can. So we're going to do until we get to halfway through the green on the other side. So um, skip this one, single crochet into this one. Skip this one, single crochet into this one. Just like that all the way across. So chain one, <laughs> let's see if I can do this right. Chain one, skip this um, chain and then single crochet into the next chain. And do that all the way until you get to the end of your fifth color change. And it's not gonna use the entire chain because obviously now you're using more yarn to make the moss stitch than you would to make the chain. So don't even try to line up the colors with what's going on with your chain, they're not gonna line up at all. Don't worry about it. Okay, here we go. So we started off this row halfway through the green, right? So like a, that's like a half of a color right there. So in, for the whole row, it's gonna go half a color and then all the other color changes and then half a color. And that's a full piece right there. That's how wide one panel would be. We're gonna do five of those. So go ahead and go to the next one, two, go to the next one, three, go to the next one, four, and then the next one is five. Now, I'm gonna to be totally honest with you guys. Since I've been doing, I kind of became obsessed with color pooling. And I can starting, I can start feeling it now, it's starting to kind of like, I don't have to do it all the time. It was like this total obsession. I have a different obsession I'm heading towards now. I apologize, I'm a Gemini, that's how I work. I just have to always be learning new stuff. So now that I've learned this and I've done so much of it, I can kind of feel my way through it. So if it if it looks like I'm making this complicated, I um, 
I apologize. If you don't want to go halfway through the color and you just want to go from goldenrod to green and this is your whole panel, you can totally do that. It just kind of sets the um, argyle off to the side a little bit and I kind of like it when it's like fully centered. That's the only reason I do it. So um, I am going to do, in order to go halfway through this, so when we did halfway through it on the chains, it was 10 chains, so we did five, right? But when you're doing it halfway through after you're doing the moss stitch, there's only four single crochets to work with. So, and then you have like a chain up two on the side. So again, remember, I'm kind of winging it, but I'm gonna do one single crochet, and rather than do two, knowing full well that we're gonna chain up two on the side and that's gonna actually take basically another single crochet, I'm gonna go back and go this way and see if it works. If it doesn't work, that's okay. Like we can always go back and undo it, right? So um, we're trying to do just slightly off from the row below it. So we're gonna do single crochet and then chain one, single crochet. Do that all the way. Try not to worry too much about the color changes right now because you can't really, unless you're like, you've been doing it a lot like I have, you can't really see like what's happening because we've only got two rows and you're not gonna see it match up until we get to the third row because the third row matches the one directly below it, right? And then the second row matches the fourth row and so forth, right? So go ahead and just do your second row and then whatever we need to do to adjust it to get it to match with the row below it, that's what we'll do. And we'll do it all in our tension. If we have to go back a little bit and undo it and kind of tighten it up a little bit, we will. Um, but um, just getting that third row set up will set you up for the entire piece. After that, it's just about like just making small changes here and there, nothing major. So go ahead and go all the way across. Don't worry too much about the color changes and I'll meet you when you get to the end of this and I'll show you how we're going to turn and go back. Okay, so I was hoping this would happen so I can show you what to do to fix the situation. So I am at the end of this. And this is the most crucial color change. It happens right here. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure the very first color change that happens in the row before, you've got it set up to happen one stitch before it, right? Except I've already changed to that rust color way early. And the green should kind of meet this green over here. So I need to fix the tension probably on this entire row. So um, in order to do that, I'm gonna undo it and just know that I need to go I, I was traveling across the yarn too fast, which means my tension was too loose. I need to tighten up a little bit. I'm gonna maybe go, let me see. If there, uh, let's see, how much do I have to fix? I need to fix about that much. So it's not that bad, it's like that much. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go back to maybe like halfway and just sort of tighten it up as I go. This, it's the third row. It's the third row. Once you get the third row set up, you're good to go. It's just, you might have to do a lot of adjusting to get that third row to be just right. So let's see if I can tighten this up a little bit, my tension, and then I won't travel across that yarn quite so fast. Just make sure you always get that chain one in between your single crochets, you don't forget. And I'm just gonna do it a little bit. I'm a loose crocheter, so I tend to always have to like tighten up a little bit when I make my changes. But I wanted to be able to show you an example of how you can fix that. So I'm glad that it happened that way. So hopefully if I do this right, there'll only be just a little bit of adjusting to do at the end of the next row. And I'm just, in order to tighten up my um, stitches, I just pull them a little bit tighter. I don't know how else to say that. Instead of pulling up to loosen it, I pull it down to tighten it.
Okay, huge difference. All right, let's see if this will do it. Yeah, not quite, almost. Really what I need is for that green to change like right here. Um, so I'm just gonna tighten it up just a little bit more. I think, here, let's just double check. So we go into, so I did the, the single crochet and chain one. Find the final single crochet from the row before. So it's the, that little V right there. And then go into the, the space after that. So if you did a chain two, it's probably um, a nice open space. If you did a chain one, it's probably going to be a tighter space. And I like to use that chain one versus chain two as sort of a buffer when you're trying to make color changes so you know like when to make your change. So for instance, I'm just gonna do one little chain one right here just to kind of see where that orange is gonna land. And it's gonna land one stitch sooner than it's supposed to. It should land right here because that's the, where the orange is the color change should land right there. So I just need to tighten up a little bit more, maybe go back a little bit further because I only went back like two groupings to tighten up and then um, we should be good to go. And then after that, it should just be tiny adjustments back and forth. So I will fix it and then I will meet you there. Okay, moment of truth. <laughs> I have a little more green to work with. Um, so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I didn't over adjust, but um, we will soon find out. So find your little space after that last single crochet and then single crochet there, chain two, and then turn it and you're going to single crochet in the next stitch. It should be green and it is, yay, got a little bit of red in there. I think that's okay. And then chain one and then that rust color should be one up and over to the right from this one down here. So, and that's going off of the stitch directly below it, not the one that's the next row down, but so two rows down. Okay, so from here, it should just be easy little adjustments um, to make that color change back and forth. See, oh, so that we changed to the rust color right here and that's gonna happen right there, so perfect. So see how like once you get it set up, it's pretty, it's a lot easier to maintain. It's just getting that third row, right, might make you sort of undo things and redo them a couple of times. Um, after that, should be easy. So go ahead and keep doing your, your rectangle um, to the measurements that you want to do your rectangle to. And then, and I'm gonna continue to do mine. So I've got two skeins done on here. I am gonna change skeins, or actually I already did with you guys on camera. I'm gonna change skeins and then I'm going to do a third one, which should take me to about 21 inches wide. And then I'm gonna take it to 24 inches and then I'm gonna try it on and see how drapey it is. If I need it to be drapier, I'm gonna go the full 28 inches, which is all four skeins. If, I, if that's still not drapey enough, I reserve the right to get a fifth skein. I may not need it, but um, that's what I'm gonna go with. So the next time I see you, I will be trying on this piece. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, fold the pieces together like they're supposed to be. I'm gonna safety pin them and I'm gonna try it on and see how it hangs on me before we add like any of the ribbing or any of the stuff around it, just for the basic piece to see if it's um, long enough. And then we'll finish the rectangle and then we'll start adding on the ribbing. So I'll show you how to weave in your ends real quick and I will show you how to undo this part and weave in those ends and then the rectangle will be perfect and from there we will build um, and make it into the sweater that it needs to be, that destiny requires it to be. So I'll meet you at the end of the rectangle. Okay guys, so I have completed this piece. This is actually, I folded it in half. So I got to the 24 inches, um, which I didn't think it was gonna be wide enough. And I, I had actually just started the fourth skein. I didn't think it was gonna be wide enough, but then I was like, okay, I'm gonna try it on just to see. And I actually think I like 24 inches as far as the width goes. So um, what I did was you just fold it in half and you just wanna pin it up to where about your armhole is gonna be. 
I left the armholes kind of big at first because I have larger arms than most people. And um, I didn't like that. Like I wanted it to fit tight on my arms. So I ended up making just a very small hole. So, and I'll show you the measurements up close when we get down to the nitty gritty and we start doing that. But I just kind of pinned it up the side up to where your armhole would be. For me, it was about that far. And did that on both sides and then try it on. And when you try it on, here, I'll put it on for you. So this is the part, I've never made one of these, I've never completed one of these before. I've tried making them in the past and I just, I'm like, I don't get it. I didn't like it. I didn't like the way it hung on me. It didn't look very good, but I saw it looked good on other people and I'm like, okay, what am I doing wrong? So I think that what we're gonna do in adding the ribbing, cause obviously this does not fit the way you would want it to fit, right? But I do think that it is far enough down in the back that it looks good. We're gonna add ribbing to the back of it and we're gonna add as much as you want. Like you can add a little tiny bit or you can do like a lot. And then we're gonna go up the sides and around the back. Then we're gonna add sleeves basically. And it, again, it can be a little tiny bit or it can be a lot depending on what you want it to look like. It's supposed to be sort of a slouchy blanket um, type of a sweater, right? So I always get to this point and I go, I hate it, I take it apart and I never finish it but I'm gonna see it through the end and see if I actually like it or if I hate it. So we'll find out, right? So the plan is really all you wanna know at this point is does it hang far enough down? Um, and I just grabbed a mirror and just kind of looked in the mirror behind me. And I do actually like the length of how far that hangs down. You do have to kind of imagine, imagine it with the ribbing around it so that you can um, sort of see what the finished product is going to look like. Right now, it just looks like a rectangle that's been pinned on me, right? So we're going to make that better. But first, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and weave in our ends. If this is not as long as you want it to be, just keep going. Go do it wider. My only issue is this part right here. I was a little bit afraid that eventually this is going to look like a vampire or like Maleficent. Not that that's anything wrong with that, but it's not the look I'm going for. So um, I didn't want it to stick up too far because I am going to put ribbing up here and I can actually do ribbing wide and then make it smaller up here. Maybe I'll do that. We'll kind of decide that as we go. But anyway, so this is how far I've gotten. Um, and this is exactly as measured 40, I think it was 44 inches by 24 inches. Um, so we're gonna go to the next step. I'm gonna take you to the close-up shot so I can show you kind of the nitty gritty details on there. But first I'm going to um, weave in all my ends and except I'm not gonna weave this end in. I'm actually gonna take this apart and I'll show you how I take it apart. We're gonna use this to, to sew up the side here. And then I'm gonna finish the final row on the opposite side so that I can leave a long tail. And we're gonna use that tail to sew up the other side. So um, that's the only thing. I'm gonna go ahead and get it prepped to that point and then I'll meet you with the camera and we'll do the close-up stuff. Okay guys, so here it is. I've completed the rectangle. It is 44 inches long by 24 inches tall. I thought I was gonna need to go taller than that, but after trying it on, I find that it's probably just right, just the way it is. So we'll stick with the measurements that they gave me. I wanted to show you really quickly, I've already gone ahead and sewn up one side. And what I did was I marked about how far I wanted it to be, which for me turned out to be about four inches um, right there. And then I just sewed, mattress stitch sewed up the side here. And I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. I know that doesn't look like four inches, but it stretches out. So, um, and I, I kind of, for me, I liked it being a little bit um, skinny there so that it stayed on my arm. Otherwise it just kind of like flopped around. So it didn't really have a lot of structure. But if you want it to be looser and just kind of hang on your arm, you can definitely make it wider. Just measure it to your own body and how you, um, what you like. So I'm gonna just use this side as a demonstration so that you can see it. Basically all I'm doing is just folding it in half and then sewing up the side to where you want the armhole to be. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, it does look fancier when you turn it um, to match the picture, which is like this. Um, and I mean, I could take the time to make the, take the measurements of all of this, but all of that is gonna vary depend on, depending on what you do for your own body. So um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on that. All you do is you just sew up the side and it automatically makes this shape right here. So I'm gonna show you how to do it on 
the other side. Um, but also I wanted to note, I used the mattress stitch and see how like, that's pretty clean. Like there's no holes or anything. It looks pretty tight. Um, and then the only thing is this one stitch where I knotted it, I did it a little bit loosely and I probably should have tightened it up right there, but I'm gonna make up for that when we do the rib stitch along the outside for the sleeve. So, um, so that's where we're at with that. So I wanted to show you on this side so that I could show you a couple of things. Um, one is how to undo this. So um, I spoke at the beginning about, um, and I also believe I also talked about this on my original video, which this kind of was a, light, a game changer for me. I can't tell you how many times I have like started out a blanket or started out making something and you count the number of stitches that you need for your chains and then you go back and then you find that you're like a couple chains short or whatever. This is a game changer for me because now I can just chain more than I need and then turn around and come back to the number of stitches you need and then you just undo the chain to where you want it, which is like, wow, what a, what a time saver. So I'm just gonna show you all you do is you just undo your little knot here on the end And then you're basically just gonna go through and pull this out all the way to where you want it to be. So for some reason there is a knot in this thing. We're gonna take that out. Okay, so this is just the chain stitch and you're just, um, and I, I like to use a little needle because it just makes it easier to pull the yarn out. very easy. I feel like I'm making it look more <laughs> difficult than it actually is. So just do that all the way back to the beginning of um, the piece and then we're going to use this yarn to um, weave in, or not weave in, to um, sew up the sides. And then I'll show you how to weave in your ends with moss stitch. I do it a little bit differently than I do it with any other stitch just because they're kind of back and forth. Um, and it'll be the uh, back and forth method so that it doesn't come undone on you. So I'm gonna do it all the way back to here. I'll meet you right here. Okay, so I got it down to where I wanted it to be and you just, like when you get down to that knot there, you just pull it so it is a knot instead of just like a um, chain because that's basically all chains are, right? They're just knots that aren't pulled tightly. And then go ahead and thread your um, yarn. I actually did cut off a little bit because I had a lot going on <laughs> there. I didn't need that much. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're just going to line these two up um, if you've ever done the mattress stitch, it's a lot like just sewing up a, um, or not sewing up, it's um, it's a lot like lacing a shoe, kind of. So you're gonna go from this side, you're gonna go over to the other side and grab, so this is the side of the stitch. Um, a lot of times when you do mattress stitch, it's the ends. So you don't have like a really well seen top of the stitch or end of the stitch there. So you're just gonna kind of grab a stitch from each row and um, go back and forth. So I'm gonna take these two, I usually do two pieces of yarn instead of one because it, one kind of, sometimes it seems a little flimsy to me. Um, so we're gonna just get it started by pulling that. Okay, so now we're gonna go back and forth and you're gonna go from the bottom or from the middle out on both sides. Um, and that is just, it's like lacing up a shoe but don't pull it tight. You're gonna only pull it tight like every, like three or four, maybe five stitches. Um, and then I'll show you what it does when you do that. So that's a good little start. And then what you want to, what you're gonna do is you're just gonna pull it tight and that yarn kind of disappears in there. So it doesn't really matter if the variegated yarn doesn't match what's going on because it's just gonna kind of disappear inside of there. And you're gonna do that all the way up until you reach the point that you have. And you know what, you could just measure it off so that you don't go too far or whatever and put a stitch marker in there so that you know where to stop. So for instance, I'm gonna do four inches. And so I'm gonna put it right about 
here. And of course, I'm gonna double check after I'm, I've already gotten up there, but this is a good place to just kind of know where I'm going to. Okay, so just keep doing that mattress stitch until you get to where you want your arm to be. And then we will knot that and uh, weave in the ends. And then we'll start on the ribbing. We're gonna figure out where to start at the bottom on the rib stitch. Okay guys, so this is the other side. I might've actually pulled that a little too tight. It's kind of stiff right there. But um, anyway, so uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna quickly show you how to weave in the ends. I actually already did weave in the ends, but I was on the phone with my daughter. So I was doing it without thinking about it. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I kind of have to show everybody. So here we go. I'm going to, like right now, I could just cut it and be done, but we're gonna do it again real quick. Let's go the other direction so it's not too stiff on that side. But um, so I'm just gonna go in underneath this and then I'm gonna jump up to the next row because there, if I go straight across, the great thing about moss stitch is that um, if you wanna make something look woven, it's very easy to do that just by pulling this yarn through here because you're gonna see that color, but we don't wanna see that color. So, um, and we can do that on a different project. But, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump up to the next row above and grab that stitch and then jump down and grab that stitch and it's gonna hide that yarn in there. And for the back and forth method, um, we're going to grab a piece of yarn that is sort of hidden, so somewhere like underneath maybe. And this is just to stop it from, um, we're gonna go back the way we came, but we, want, we don't want to just go straight back the way we came or the yarn will just come right back out, right? So you wanna grab a piece of yarn to stop it and then go back the way you came. I can't remember, up, I did up, yeah. Down, up, down, and then up. So this side's gonna be super duper secure <laughs> because I did it twice, but um, so that is that side. Okay, stop, don't go any further. I hate it. <laughs> so don't like, hopefully if you're watching this video, you haven't like paused it and advanced on, I will make a little note in there that says, don't do what I'm about to do um, because I have regrets. And I think I have the solution, but let me show you what I did. So when you see this part right here, I'm almost done. See how it kind of, it lays kind of nice and like straight right here. I messed it up when we did the squaring off on this side. Hopefully you can see that. that hangs weird, doesn't look good at all, right? So in order to fix that, I'm going to just continue the ribbing around in like that, around the edge there, around the circle without squaring it off. So in order to do that though, this is the beginning, so I gotta go all the way back. So that's frustrating, it's part of the process, right? So I can do that, I can go all the way back. Um, the other thing too though, is I think I like it better if I can put like a button right here and pull it across the front. But I think what I wanna do, cause see how, it, see how the collar folds over? I think I wanna make it bigger. So I think I'm gonna go for maybe five inches on this. And then I think I might like it. So don't do what I did. I'm gonna undo this part, redo the ribbing. So the way that I showed you how to do the ribbing, just continue doing that, but just do it all the way around. Don't do the squared off part, just go all the way around. I'll meet you back where it comes fully, fully around and we'll talk about how to join that ribbing. Um, and then we'll go from there. And hopefully, hopefully this works for you guys. I told you it was a journey. It's a journey, right? So I'm actually gonna undo the whole thing, redo it with five inches all the way around, which will give it a little bit more in the front and on top and um, we may end up putting a little button. I might put a buttonhole right here. So I'm actually gonna mark where I want this buttonhole to land and we're gonna just skip over. Yeah, I think we're gonna just redo some of this video. So um, I'm gonna go back and show you how to do a buttonhole and um, how to put the button because I really do, I do like the option of being able to connect, connect it in the front or wrap it in the front like that. Anyway, so Hang tight, I'm gonna rethink my choices. So stay tuned. I'm gonna go ahead and start right here with a slip stitch where, that, where my marker was. And I'm gonna pull in the new color. 
and I'm going to chain out about what I think will be about four inches. So obviously that is always a little bit of a guess. So we're gonna guess about how much that is and we may have to like undo it and redo it to get it just right. Okay, and then remember your chain, once you get stitches in there, is gonna stretch out a little bit. Okay, so we still have, that's about three inches. So let's go, like even stretched out, that's about three inches. So let's go a little bit further. And it doesn't matter if, you know, the number of stitches, it doesn't have to be odd or even. So that stretched out is a little more than four. So let's go back a couple stitches on that. You don't want to stretch it too far. I mean, obviously I could make this stretch really far, but like, you know, where uh, putting other stitches in it will probably stretch it out too. And that looks about, about right. So, um, so let's try that. So then what we're going to do is we're just going to do one, we're going to chain one to go up to the next row, like pretend like that's your foundation row, right? So we're going to chain one to go up and then we're going to come back and we're going to go into the back stitch only. And you're just gonna single crochet in the back stitch. Now, if you want, I mean, you could do like a half double crochet if you need it to be wider, but I think a single is gonna be about the right width to go um, in every single stitch in here, I think. So back stitch only, single crochet. And it's just, you know, when you're working with a chain, it's kind of hard to tell where the back stitch is. I'm just putting it in the bump in the back. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna anchor it here. Um, that's the top of the stitch. And then I'm gonna go up one and anchor it in that stitch. And I'm going right through the center of the stitch just because for some reason in moss stitch that just feels right to me. So I'm just gonna go right through the center of the stitch on that. And then we'll see if that makes it lay a little bit straighter. So I'm gonna head back this way. Um, and we're gonna Get used to which way this yarn goes. And then we're gonna go into the back stitches and single crochet all the way up. This um, yarn is so much softer <laughs> than the other one. Although Red Heart yarn does soften up in the wash a lot. Like I noticed that, you know, the more, I, one of my favorite blankets that's on my bed is like super soft and but I mean I've been it's all made with red heart pretty much red heart acrylic yarn and it um, it's like probably 10 years old maybe a little more than that and it's been washed quite a number of times and it's really really soft now but it started off pretty stiff so um, but I, I like that the edges that will be around my you know my skin and stuff is gonna be a little softer okay so we're gonna turn around and we're gonna come back and see if that um, I chained up one and then we're going to go ahead and go into the back stitch or the back loop of the stitch all the way down. This is hopefully going to make for like a nice chunky soft edging all the way around this panel. Okay, so into the stitch, which is the space underneath the chain one there, and then slip stitch. 
right? So that finishes off that top part. And now we're gonna slip stitch into the center of the next one, almost like you're doing a waistcoat stitch, and then come back the way you came. And it should, that should make it lay nice and flat with no bunching. And maybe this will be the back now, because look at how that sets up in there. So we'll see. Okay, so just keep doing that back and forth. Um, I will come back if, um, if it's not working out. Um, you're gonna have to do like probably eight or 10 rows before you know if it's gonna give you the look that you want. Okay guys, so hopefully you guys saw the part where I said stop, don't do what I just did <laughs> because I had to go back and undo it because I, in my opinion, it looked terrible. I didn't, I didn't like it. So yes, I could redo this entire recording and um, make it seem like I am perfect all the time, but I think it's important for all of you to see that I'm not, that I'm just like you. And this is a journey. I've, I say it over and over again. This is a journey. Um, I don't make good decisions all the time. So what I did was I went in and I took all of this out and I decided to make it slightly bigger, so I changed it to five inches instead of four. I think I'm just gonna redo this, but I changed it to, to five inches around instead of four just to make it a little bit wider. And then what I did was instead of doing this part here and then coming in and starting at the end and going around, I did not like this pokey thing here. So instead, I just did this and I just continued it around. So hopefully, that makes sense. So this at this point is completely symmetrical. This matches that, this matches that. Okay, so I'm about to change it so it's not symmetrical. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a buttonhole like right here. It actually might be on that side. It doesn't matter. You can put it on whatever side looks more, most comfortable to you. This is the button that I chose. I've actually loved this button for a long time and I've tried to use it in other things and I, um, it never worked out, so maybe it was fate. Um, it's like one of those buttons that doesn't have a match to it, so it's like a single button deal, right? Had to pick the right thing for it. So, um, so we're gonna make a quick little, I'm gonna show you what I did first, and we're gonna make a quick little buttonhole so that you kind of know how to do that. So I took all of the edging out and I redid it, um, and I made it a little bit bigger. So this is five inches. Um, the only difference between front and back is that this, the connection here is not quite as clean as the connection over here, and it's just kind of the way it works out. So it doesn't really matter. It depends on, you know, obviously, like what look you like better. You might like that to be a little bit more homespun looking. This is, um, I think, a little bit more, looks more like a machine did it than homespun. So um, that is completely up to you. I'm calling this the front. So I marked last time when I had all of the edging on there and I had it on, I marked a kind of where I wanted the buttonhole to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go into this part right here and on this line, that's where we're gonna do the um, buttonhole. It's so, so easy. I just wanted to make sure you knew how to do it. So uh, there are 15 stitches. I'm probably gonna do like three or four stitches in the middle, but we don't want it, we want it to be smaller than the button. That's the most important part. Otherwise the button will just pull out all the time. So you need to, you need to have to be able to stretch it to get the button in there. Otherwise it'll just come undone and it'll drive you crazy. So. I'm gonna go ahead, flip this around, and we're gonna do it pretty much in the center. One, two, the center would probably be like, let's give it like three stitches and see if that works. Three, four, five, six, six and six is 12, and it's 15 stitches. So let's, what we're gonna do is we're gonna skip three stitches so just chain one, two, three, skip three, one, two, three, and then go into this one. And let's see, we're gonna practice and see if this hole actually works for us. It might be too big. Okay, so can we fit the button through? Yes, we can. Does it come out really easily? I don't, it's hard to say. It might be a little too easy to get that button through. Let's try two stitches and see what, what that looks like. So two, 
chains. It won't be perfectly center, but no one's going to notice one stitch that's off, right? Okay, can we still get the button through that hole? Yeah, and it's a little bit tighter. I feel more comfortable with that. Okay, so now you just continue on just like um, you were before as if you never skipped those stitches. And then when you do those chains, you're just gonna go into the back loop of those chains. We're not actually gonna put the button on until we get to the, probably that's probably the last step that we'll do. So um, you don't have to worry about, um, you know, where that's gonna go on the other side. Okay, so just continue doing that all the way around. I will meet you where it meets on the other side um, with where we started, and then we will figure out how we're gonna join it together. And then it's just about the sleeves. So um, it should be pretty easy from this point on without that one major See, for you guys, it's just a video. <laughs> you don't feel like you've invested a bunch of time. But if you have, in your past, made a large project and had to undo a bunch of it, hopefully you feel my frustration. But it's just part of the journey, you know? Part of the whole thing. Okay, so that's the buttonhole. Um, let's continue with the rest. Okay, so I don't know if you can see that, but there's my little buttonhole. I marked it where I wanted it to be, and I just came around and basically just did like chain three over the top of three stitches, and then when I came back around, I went, instead of going into the chain, I went to the hole underneath the chain. Um, just kind of gave it a smoother look around there. Um, so there's my little buttonhole. It um, looks really small, but I can actually fit the button through it. So we actually, we don't want the button to accidentally slip out every time you turn around, right? So that's done. Um, I'm almost all the way around. Sorry, this project has taken a, a lot longer than I thought. This might be one of the longest projects ever because um, I had to have surgery. I was hoping that I would be done before the surgery, but um, lots of stuff happened and I wasn't able to get done before I had the surgery. And then I did the surgery and I was in the hospital for four days. And so that kind of threw everything off. And so now I'm trying to go like, where was I? It's amazing how much you don't want to crochet when you're sitting in a hospital bed. So all is well, no stress. Um, the surgery turned out great. Uh, so we're now I've been home for a while. It's been like two weeks <laughs> since the last thing I recorded. So um, I've been home for like a week now and or a few like, like five days now so I'm ready to get back to business and look how close I am to finishing so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue this on and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna connect this um, and then we'll try it on make sure it looks good and then it'll be time to do the sleeves okay so here's what we're gonna do um, we've done the last two joins right we did slip stitch slip stitch and then we're about to go turn around and go back up the side through the back loops only but now we have to incorporate this side we're gonna go through both of those loops, and then we're only gonna go through the back loop of this one, just like we normally would do back loop only. Make sure your yarn's on the right side. Don't worry about this, we're gonna uh, weave that in later and that'll tighten up that part right there. But for now, we'll just go through those loops and then you're gonna actually, instead of doing a single crochet, you're just gonna slip stitch to join. And we're gonna do that all the way up the ridge. So through both loops here, through the back loop on the next stitch, and then slip stitch to join. Keep it kind of loose, so it kind of looks like a single crochet, so they match. You don't want it to tighten up too much.
Okay, so what that's gonna do is it's gonna give you a ridge on this side, but it's not as big of a ridge as if you did a single crochet, because that makes it a little bit higher. So it blends in a little bit better with these ridges. And then on this side, the ridge is gonna match on that side too. So it's gonna look nice and be consistent looking. Um, so we're gonna do that. And then the next thing we're gonna do when we get done with this, I'm gonna try this on and figure out how long I want my sleeves to be. Um, and that is completely personal. You'll have to decide sort of where you want your sleeves to go on your arm. Okay, and then we'll chain one to t finish that off and then we will tie that. So you can kind of see where, this, the, um, where the seam is, but it's pretty unnoticeable and um, it's pretty good on that side too. So, and it's right in the back in the middle anyway, so that's about where you'd want to seem to be. <laughs> so it seems like it makes sense. So that's where we're gonna... I have so many pairs of scissors, and this one is like my paper scissors. Those are not good scissors for this. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna try it on, figure out how long I sleep, want my sleeves to be, and then we'll start on the sleeves. Okay, so I tried it on. Um, I would show you the video, except that um, I still kind of look like I just got home from the hospital. <laughs> so we're gonna wait until I look a little bit better. But um, for now, so um, wait till the end of the video and I will show you what it looks like on. But um, what I've decided in putting it on is actually the sleeves come right to the corner of my arm. So it kind of covers up the big part of my arm anyway. So I decided just to make it look good, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna match it to this. So this was 15 stitches. I'm gonna do 15 stitches on here. It's about four inches. So they're gonna, it's just gonna all match. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start down here at the um, little, what would you call them? the armpit area? And I'm just gonna work my way around just like I did with the other one. So it's gonna make kind of a long, um, little kind of chunky looking um, hem, I guess you would call it, or a chunky looking um, ribbed edge there. And it's, I think it's gonna be really cute. I actually really like this sweater. I like it more than I thought I would. So um, so we're gonna start it, join it with a slip stitch, just like we did before. And then we're gonna chain up 15, 16 actually, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that's 15 stitches, but then we're gonna chain one to turn and go back, right? So 16 total. And then you're gonna go in the back stitch. Actually, it doesn't really matter on the first one, but um, I can go on the back stitch on this and do your single crochets back this way, just like we did on the other one. And we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did on the ribbed edging around the outside. We're just gonna do it around this little tiny sleeve hole. And we're gonna do it on both sides. And join it the exact same way. This part should go a lot faster than when you're going around the outside. And since I'm not gonna take two weeks off to <laughs> do other stuff. The only thing is you wanna make sure that when you connect it, that it matches the other um, rib. Hold on, I can't talk and think at the same time, apparently. Okay, so when you connect it to the side, it's gonna be a little different because we're not just going into the top, we're going into the sides now. So just remember you're gonna go like through that hole and then into the next stitch and then turn and work your way back. You just wanna make sure that it looks the same because remember on the inside of this, it has a slightly different look. Just make sure that they match. If not, you may have to turn it inside out and do it the other way whatever way looks good on there. And then just go back through the back loops only. And that ought to do it. 
Look, I made this little piece while I was in the hospital. Um, this was about all I could manage. <laughs> so I'm just gonna edge this and make it into a cute little kitchen cloth thing because um, it's just cotton yarn. And um, yeah, it's amazing once you get going on these, um, when you start doing plan pooling, how easy it is to just pick it up and just do that with just about every, I mean, every skinny yarn you can find that's capable of doing it. So, and it's just kind of soothing and, you know, moss stitch is really easy. So, um, so I was able to do that while I was laid up in the hospital. So pretty cool. Okay guys, so I finished the sleeves um, and they, I already wove all the ends in and that's what the bottom of it looks like. It's pretty, blends in pretty well. That one blends in pretty well. So um, looking pretty good. All I have left to do is um, put the button on it and uh, try it on for y'all. So here's, gosh, you can't be around my cat for two seconds. She puts fur on everything. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I just, I put it on and then I lined up where I wanted the button to be. So I'm just gonna grab some yarn. Luckily this button has huge holes so I can just use my tapestry needle for it. Um, otherwise you might have to go down in your needle size a little bit to like a regular needle. And I'm gonna grab a couple of pieces just to make it extra strong. It's, you know, you could just do one, but like it's just not gonna be strong really if I do that. So I'm gonna go through a couple here. Okay, and then that's pretty much, you just basically go in and out of there until you feel like it's nice and strong. So I'm gonna come up this way and then I'm gonna tie a knot with the ones that are so like, you can kind of barely see it on the inside there. It's right there, but you, it's not super noticeable. And I'm gonna take this end and this end and I'm just gonna tie a knot. And then I'm gonna weave those ends in. And if you wanna tie it on, on both sides, maybe. Seems pretty sturdy. I have tried this on. I actually really like it. I can't wait to show it to you. <laughs> it's like, I mean, it's it was, took me years to make one of these because every time I tried, I was like, I just don't get it. It just isn't a very flattering look, but you just have to make it bigger. If it, the smaller ones, I think are not very flattering, but the big ones that hang really, um, just kind of drapey. Those ones I think are actually quite flattering. And um, they remind me a little bit of like a vintage, like 1930s, uh, those cocoon jackets, the big long ones, um, in just like a smaller version of it. So um, it looks kind of, I don't know, it's kind of funky. I like it. one side woven in I'm gonna weave in the other side and then give me two seconds and I will try it on for you here it is guys what do you think it's kind of cool huh I love it I think it's um I don't know I just really like how it fits actually look at the back like if you tell somebody that you crocheted that they're gonna be super impressed because <laughs> I mean even though it look it is actually easy to do it looks really impressive so um, so that's what I love about that Argyle um, plan pooling look but it doesn't again it doesn't have to be the Argyle you can actually do it in um, any kind of panel that you want to do it in but um, what do you think I like it you could actually make it longer these sleeves I haven't pushed up but you could actually pull them down um, and wear them a little longer if you want to. Doesn't it kind of remind you of those like 1930s 
long coats that like cocoony things. It doesn't look like I should maybe have like a, um, a fur hat on <laughs> to go with it or something, but um, yeah, so there you go. That's the whole project. Um, come and uh, hang out with us on Janelle's Quarantine Crochet on Facebook. Um, that's the best place to share pictures and ideas and ask questions. And if you need help, um, that's just a great place. That whole community of people is, they're just wonderful people. And um, they're super helpful and nice. And uh, please leave in comments what you think, um, what you're gonna do with yours. If you're gonna use a particular, you know, if you're gonna use, a certain colorway or if you're not going to do plan pooling you're going to do something else i'd love to hear about it i'd love to see pictures um, so share all of that with us and also be sure to look in if you are planning on doing um, an argyle pattern or something i am now an affiliate for gosh amazon lion brand dollar tree i don't know i'm missing one um, oh, and uh, crochet, um, wecrochet.com. Um, and all of those links are in the description. So if you need to stock up on your yarn and you want to support me, that's a great place to do it. Just click on one of those links and it doesn't cost you any extra. It just gives me a little bit of a kickback for recommending. Um, most of the um, yarns that I have found that are really good at color pooling to make this Argyle pattern is um, Red Heart, um, but there's a huge list on my original video for color pooling and I will um, also link that in the description as well. So good luck, have fun. I would love to see it if you wanna show it to me and um, I will see you on the next video. Bye.